In this video, we will cover all you need to know for warmouth identification. I'll even compare the warmouth against some species outside of the genus Lepimus, and then give you some tips on how to catch warmouth with rod and reel. I am Koa and this is K and Fish and Smarts where we fishers are always learning and sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes. This is a video produced from my Lepimus identification guide that is also hosted in its entirety on koa.org forward slash sunfishes and my site also has the individual species pages as well as the six step guide to teach you how to identify these sunfishes on your own. And the warmouth is one of my favorite Lepimids or common sunfishes to catch because it's just such a rarity to get on rod and reel. For about a three month survey period this past year, when I went around the United States catching sunfishes for this project, I caught more green gill than warmouth. And the green gill is the hybrid between the bluegill and the green sunfish. The warmouth Lepimus gullosus is a species of sunfish in the family Syncharchidae within the genus Lepimus. Similar to the Asakids, your musky pike and pickerel, the warmouth is a lion weight predator, often hiding in cover and waiting for a chance to ambush unsuspecting prey. The meristics on this species will usually show 10 dorsal rays, uh, ranging from 9 to 11, 10 dorsal spines, again ranging from 9 to 11, 13 to 14 pectoral rays, 9 to 10 anal rays, and 3 anal spines. And I have created a video here on Fish and Smarts to teach you how to count these spines and rays and lepimids which is linked below. The warmouth has a deep compressed body like the other lepimids though, usually maintaining a thicker and somewhat more elongated profile, as in the body will be a bit more football-like than roundly compared to the other lepimids. The lateral line is complete, often with 36 to 45 lateral scales. A key feature to examine on the warmouth is a small patch of teeth. It's on the tongue, which is a feature present on the warmouth and no other lepimid. Though rarely, a small underdeveloped patch may also be present on the green sunfish. These teeth on the tongue are called glossohyal teeth. If you're not sure if you're seeing teeth or not, just don't be afraid to stick your finger in and just feel them. They're not terribly sharp. They feel like sandpaper. You won't cut yourself. And even a small warmouth should have a big enough mouth to let you stick a finger in and gently feel the tongue. But do keep in mind that there are other patches, uh, ventral patches of teeth that are more posterior or further back in the mouth than sunfishes. So you got to really make sure that you're feeling the ones up on the tongue. The warmouth has distinct dark reddish brown lines radiating from the back of a reddish brown eye. This is one of these features that isn't present on any of the other lepimids, but is seen on other sunfish species within the family. For instance, this mud sunfish. You can easily tell the difference between a mud sunfish and any other lepimid, as all lepimids have three anal spines and an indented caudal fin, while the mud sunfish usually has five anal spines and a rounded caudal fin. Often the body of a warmouth is a dark brown olive color on top with irregular mottling and bars along the side. A purplish overall sheen may also be visible. The belly is usually creamed yellow in color and the fins have spotting or wavy bands that are often absent in the young. Breeding males have pronounced colors and patterns including a bright reddish orange spot at the base of the second dorsal fin. Breeding males usually also have brighter red eyes. Uh, southern populations, such as in Texas and Florida, may have many red or orange spots along the body, especially on breeding males. At times, it may seem like there are, are light blue spots on the body if the light is hitting the scales at the certain angle from the viewer's perspective. These spots are less apparent from the much more conspicuous blue spots on lepimids like a green sunfish or a dollar sunfish. The warmouth reaches a maximum size around 30 centimeters or a foot and the IGFA all tackle world record is 2 pounds 7 ounces. 
Uh, but this roughly 8-inch specimen caught by John Hartlib, uh, my buddy down in southern Illinois, is a nice sized specimen to catch. So be happy if you get one like that. Uh, the opercular flap or ear flap often has a light edging with a red to purple half moon spot. Uh, this opercular flap is short, typically not longer than the length of the eye. Sometimes the red and purple color is very faint or hardly visible. Often the black portion of the ear flap will have a multicolored iridescence. The gill rakers on the first gill arch are very long and thin, similar to that of a green sunfish. And I have made a separate video showing how you can look at these rakers on lepamids. And I highly advise that you start looking at the rakers on all your sunfishes so that you can start gaining a familiarity with what they look like on the species and populations in your waters. Uh, that video is linked below. The warmouth has a very large mouth. Lipping a warmouth like you would lip a black bass is no problem on mature specimens. The upper jaw often extends under or past the pupil of the eye. Uh, more specifically, the most posterior edge of the maxilla will align underneath the eye's pupil or past the interior edge of the eye's pupil. The warmouth has a short and rounded pectoral fin that will generally not pass the eye if bent forward. Typically, there are 14 pectoral rays. Native to the Great Lakes Basin and Mississippi River Basin extending to the southern coastline, also native to the Atlantic and Gulf drainages from the James River in Virginia and the northern parts of the Rio Grande Basin. This species has been widely introduced across the United States with scattered populations along the Pacific drainages. Yes, way up there. Uh, introduced populations now exist in New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, California, Oregon, Idaho, Washington, as well as various states in the northeastern parts of the United States, including Connecticut and perhaps even further north in New Hampshire. Bob Jacobs, a fisheries biologist who was a senior advisor on my Lepimus project here, he actually caught this warmouth in Connecticut, and that's pretty rare where he got it. So you can find warmouth in vegetated lakes and ponds, as well as the backwaters of creeks, and they're usually over muddy substrate. And true to the nature as a lion weight predator, most of the warmouth I sampled for my Lepimus survey were caught hiding underneath rocks, logs, and thick vegetation in moderately deep pools within creeks and in the waters behind dams of lakes. Uh, warmouth love cover. So the warmouth is most often confused with a species that's not a lepimid, but it's still a centauric. It has in the same family. The rock bass does look a lot like a warmouth, especially younger rock bass that retain more of that irregular motlene in the saddles on the body. Uh, the warmouth, like all lepimids, has three anal spines, while the rock bass will have five to seven. The warmouth normally has 10 dorsal spines, though sometimes 9 or 11, while the rock bass has 11 to 13. The warmouth has the dark lines radiating from the eyes, as well as color on the ear flap, while the rock bass typically only has a single thick and vertical dark line coming from the eye, often called a teardrop or suborbital line. And keep in mind that both those species have a patch of teeth on the tongue. Warmouth may also be confused with small black basses, uh, like the smallmouth basses. That is one of the black basses that doesn't have the dark lateral band like some of the other black basses, such as the largemouth bass. Black basses like rock bass and lepamids are all in the same family of Centricidae. The easiest way to tell a smallmouth bass from a warmouth is just by comparing the body depth to length. Even though the warmouth does typically have a more elongated body than the other lepimids, uh, the, the body depth is still around 40 to 50% of the standard length. Smallmouth bass will usually have a body depth that's not exceeding about 30% of the standard length. Also a good trick is just to count the dorsal rays. Most black basses will have 12 to 15 dorsal rays, while the warmouth typically only has 10, uh, sometimes 9 to 11. So a warmouth is always a treat to catch. I noticed while fishing profusely for this Lepimus survey that 
Warmouth were more often hiding underneath rocks and fallen trees, while other sunfishes in the same water, such as the red breast and bluegill, were more often willing to swim near to the surface and in open water. Warmouth tended to just suddenly dart out of a hiding spot and nab the bait. Warmouth didn't often take to small flies. Instead, most of the warmouth that I caught during this survey took live bait like worms, uh, more often than artificial baits. I learned Warmouth also loved chopped shrimp. So when targeting Warmouth around other sunfishes, uh, I made the bait profile larger uh, because they've got that big mouth. And so bluegill and the other lepomids with smaller mouths did not have uh, that great of success and the bait was able to get by them the warm mouth could grab on. And as you know, if you're fishing around bluegill with small baits, it's a pain trying to get past them. Share your warm mouth catching tips down in the comments below. Other fishers probably love to read them. Subscribe to join the Fishing Smarts community here. Thank you to the names you're seeing over here. These are the patrons of Koa Nature. I definitely would not be able to make these videos without their support. I say to you, fish responsibly and Good luck.